I'm Peter Brown from Tiny and Sons Glass. Tiny and Sons Glass was established in 1978 when my father and brother and I were at 575 Washington Street in Pembroke. We're certified and qualified to do all your windshield replacement and repair. Tiny and Sons Glass is a community-based business. We have 12 mobile vans that come to you. If the weather's bad, you can come here to the shop. We have a nice waiting area, TV, Wi-Fi, kid-friendly, pet-friendly. We also can move about 15, 20 cars a day through the shop. Perfect for you when the weather's bad. So come on down to Tiny and Sons Glass if you need your windshield replaced or repaired. Tiny and Sons Glass, 1-888-64-TINYS. Just call. Thank you. What is the most important meal of the day, Kenny? Breakfast. Correct. What if you don't know how to make breakfast? You can learn from us. That's right. You could, couldn't you? We're going to make um, an omelet, and we're going to make bacon and eggs, and we're going to make pancakes. This time on Cooking with Kenny and Kyle, right here on Pembroke Town News. Right, Ken? Right. to the fifth episode of Cooking with Kenny and Kyle. I'm Kyle Harney. I'm Kenny Del Monte. And today we're going to be making the most important meal of the day, which is... Breakfast. That's correct. We're going to make three versions of breakfast. Uh, I'm going to make the first uh, item, which is going to be an omelet and a sausage. And Kenny's going to make... Scrambled eggs and bacon. Yep. And uh, then we're also going to make pancakes. Uh, so... Um, Pretty much making sausage is pretty easy. They do it all for you. You just have to put it in a hot pan and brown it. So that's what we're going to do. Our episode is mm. called Start the Day Off Right. That's Penny's idea. And, and I'm very proud of it. The first thing we've done is we've washed our hands. That's the most important thing to do first before you, you start you cooking. <laughs> they should, anyway. Unless you're at some flea bag yeah, hotel. Yes, it's for or oral hyg hygiene. You know, you don't want to spread germs. No, you don't. No Must. one likes germs. So anyway, you just you're gonna put these in on, on you know in a skillet and you're gonna brown them. It's pretty simple. If you can't figure that out, perhaps maybe you should watch another show like how to watch TV. <clears throat> so Kitty, what's going on in your life as we get the day started? Well, I'm going to be taking part in the Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. And you were cast as? I'm, I'm cast in the lead role that was played by Gene Wilder back in 1971. The same year that Walt Disney World came out, was built in Orlando, Florida. And also that same year, the Walt Disney film, Ben and the Broomsticks, came out that year. I didn't know that. I thought Ben and the Broomsticks came out after that, but I believe it. Did. It did. Well, it came out only a week after Walt Disney World. October 1st, 1971 is when Disney World came out. And one week later, October 8th, 1971, Benoth and Broomsticks came out. And do you know the, the little story about um, what Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory was really all about? It was really a commercial for Nestle's. For Nestle to make Wonka bars. Yes, but then they, they ran over in the time and all the Wonka bars melted. Yeah, <clears> it was the formula it's that true. did it. And so in real life, they couldn't even use any of the actual Wonka bars. Wonka bars so. Um, so, for the omelet, we're going to use three eggs and some uh, triple cheddar cheese. I feel like threes today. And we're going to use, I can't believe it's not butter. And you know what? I can't believe it's not butter. It's vegan. It is, indeed. Thank you for selling that. Um, so, uh, we're going to put a little bit of the I can't believe it's not butter in the can I can't believe it's not a pan. Because it's butter in the pan. Yeah, so that will, and then when we heat that up, it'll give us a nice smooth surface for the uh, omelet. So once we get cooking there, we'll be cooking with electricity, actually. So let me just... Also in 1955, Meanwhile. when Walt Disney World, Walt Dis when Disneyland was created in seven, that year, the Walt Disney film Lady and the Tramp came out that year. Right. The most famous scene is the one of the two of them having dinner at Tony's, uh, chewing on spaghetti. Yes, yeah, so and then they chew it right up to each other's mouths, and then they get embarrassed. Yeah, she's like... It was like they were kissing. You'd think they were kissing. But they weren't. They were just eating spaghetti. That's all. And then 
Linda Tramp says, pushes the mushroom with his nose. I thought it was a meatball. The mu I meant to say meatball. Oh, no. yeah, I'm gonna say Nobody's meatball. perfect. If somebody pushed a m mushroom toward you, you'd probably <laughs> push it back. I meant push the meatball with his nose. They pushed a meatball at you. Nobody's perfect. You know, I don't know how I'd feel if someone pushed a meatball toward me. I've never well, that's what Tramp did with his nose. Situation. Can you make me a fork, Ken? Well, the famous song that was sung in Lady of the Tramp is called Bellinata. That means beautiful. By Tony. It was his restaurant, you know. And they, and they, they referred to dogs? Tramp they as Butch. Dogs? They referred to Trap as Bush, and they was both to give him a bone, but then Tony decided they should have spaghetti, and he and the lady should have That's spaghetti and meatballs. Bone or spaghetti and meatballs, they're both out. They're both delicious. Yeah, well, bones are what dogs eat. Right, well, do they eat them, or do they just gnaw on them? Gnaw on them, I suppose. Hmm. I don't really run with that crowd. Yeah. The dog crowd. Yeah, well, I know of other dogs. In, in animation, like Scooby Doo and <laughs> and his nephew Scrappy Doo, he wasn't afraid. Yes. No, he loved the Scrappy Doo loved the battle cry of da 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 puppy power, proving that he was not afraid of ghosts and monsters the way his uncle Scooby was. Well, he was all full of you know. Hoots he was part. a coward. He was a coward. That Scooby Doo. He was full of malarkey and hoots so part. was it. So was his best friend Shaggy. Who was voiced by the legendary disc jockey Casey Kasem? Yep, that is true. Now I've got the butter searing here, and I'm going to pour the mixture of the eggs and the cheese in here. You can mix anything you want into an omelet. You could put, you know, um, peppers or um, any vegetables, onions if you like, or ham. There's all kinds of things you can put into an omelet. So you're going to let it sit, and um, uh, in a few minutes we're going to we're going to tilt the pan. And we're going to um, see how the omelet runs a little bit. And then as it does this, my brother's secret, um, as you do this, it'll make the omelet perfect. And then it should, <laughs> hopefully, come out of the pan beautifully. All we can do is hope for the best. That's all we can do. That is correct, Kenny. And the sausage should be sizzling, you know? Well, it takes a while. Don't sell the steak, sell the sizzle. That's what they say. <laughs> I've never heard that phrase before. You haven't? No, I... I can't say I have. And Scooby and Shaggy always travel with their friends Fred, Daphne, and Velma. Yeah. Known as Mysteries Incorporated in their big van, the Mystery Machine. Well, yep, and it had like those flowers on the side. Yeah, there were flowers on the tires, too. Yep. You know, nobody wears a neckerchief quite like Fred. It's called an ascot. Mm. That's what he wore, an ascot. It didn't look like an ascot. Daphne wore an ascot, too, you know, that silk scarf. It was called an ascot. And then, isn't she the one in the mini skirt? Yeah, the, yeah well, Velma wore a skirt, too, you know. Oh, yeah. Daphne wore the dress, you know, and the, and the pink nylon stockings, you know. It doesn't seem like it's really good for ghost hunting, that outfit. Yeah, shaggy, you know, with the goatee on his chin, you know, because he was a hippie. The, a the hippie man. at the time, right out of the 60s. In 69 was, was the hippie generation, the time we had the, the Woodstock Rock Festival. And, and Charles Schultz, named, whose nickname was Sparky, named Snoopy's little yellow bird friend after that rock festival. Indeed. And he's Charlie Brown's dog. Yep. And Every time Scooby Doo and a friend, his friends would unmask a criminal disguised as a ghost or a monster, that criminal would say, and I would have gone away, away with it if it weren't for you meddling, meddling kids. kids. Yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I've been to Six Flags, and I got to meet Scooby-Doo and Scrappy-Doo. I no. told Scooby about the way he loves to eat food with his friend Shaggy, you know. And He's like another... Solving mysteries, of the adventures he has, solving mysteries with his friends, Fred, Daphne, Velma, and, and Shaggy of Mysteries Incorporated. What's that um, game you always play? Um, that's got Archie Riverdale Rescue. Yes, Archie. That's it. Yeah, with Moose or whatever his name is. Who eats yeah. All and there's Archie and Betty and Veronica, Jughead and Reggie. The five of them together are the bu bubblegum pop group, the Archies, known for their number one hit, Sugar Sugar, in 69, the mm -hmm. same year that mm -hmm. the Sesame Street and the Brady Bunch and Scooby-Doo were you know, came out. Yeah. And uh, Neil Armstrong was the first man on the moon. And it occurred just one day before my second birthday, on July 20th, 1969. Because a day later, I would be two, on the 21st of July, I would, be, I would be two years old. So you don't remember it like it just happened? 
Yeah, well, I got this information about Neil Armstrong on, from my from one of my my book entitled Charlie Brown's Second Super Book of Questions and Answers. Oh. He teams up with all his friends, uh, Lucy, Linus, Schroeder, Sally, Marcy, Peppermint Patty, and Franklin. You know what I'd say to Schroeder if I ever met him? What? Sit up straight! Well, he loves Beethoven, you know, and Lucy's always leaning against the piano. She wants, get she wants him to love her the way Tribon's sister Sally loves Linus, but he only cares about his security blanket. He holds over his shoulder and sucks his thumb. Who's the one with the naturally curly hair? Frida. Frida, obviously. Peppa and Patty's friend Martha always called her sir, you know. Yeah, that's kind of an oversight, don't you think? Yeah, and, and Tribon's friend would always call him a blockhead. Because nice. he can't win any baseball games, you know, and he, he can't talk to the little red-haired girl whose name is Heather. Well, he, in the penis yeah. movie, Charlie Brown finally flew a kite, and he finally talked to the little red-haired girl. And then what happened? Lucy always did what she always did, pull the football away from him. You know Here what? in New England Village, we had a statue of Charlie Brown, six feet tall, with him all wrapped up in, in kite string, you know. You should never trust a him. psychiatrist who pra practices out of doors. She, her psychiatry booth was actually like a lemonade stand. I know, that's another giveaway. So anyway, this I, is what the an omelet will look like when it's not a little bit burned, but we went a little long on the uh, Snoopy story. So, um, there... Yeah, Snoopy's a werewolf and flying ace, and he's always saying to the Red Baron, Curse you, Red Baron! Shaking his fist at him, you know. Okay, and our, our sausage is finally sizzling, so... <clears throat> And Snoopy was also known to don these sunglasses and a sweater and call himself Joe Cool. And he put on a mask and he calls himself the Masked Marvel. I've had them since I was a kid, you know. I know. I've always liked, but I had to stop having them because they're not good for me. That's true. Because what happens if you eat food that's not too good for you? Probably get sick, you know. Well, you just won't be able to live as long and enjoy food as long as you can because you'll... It's a sacrifice I had to make giving up those, those foods I love so much. Indeed. Indeed. So we're going to be, just give us a few minutes here, and the sausage will be ready, and then Kenny, you can try our delicious omelet. Okay? Better let it cool for a while. It's too a hot. Moment. Just a moment. You don't want it too hot. It's too hot. It's too hot. Too hot, baby. Got to run for shelter. Got to run for shade. shade. There are many phrases that people say that can make me think of songs and movie titles and TV yeah. shows. Well, it's hard to keep up with you sometimes. Yeah, I can give you a little history. For instance, like uh, back in 1975, the uh, Kiss the Light first live concert album called Alive came out. And uh, in Terre Haute, Indiana, there was a disc jockey named Bill Starkey, you know. No, I didn't in Terre Haute, Indiana. Yes, and, and, and he threatened the radio time. station saying, if you don't play the Kiss record, the Kiss album was around you. They thought it was a joke. And the, the joke was on them, wasn't it? When a whole bunch of people showed up, demanding to hear Kiss the Music, that was the first official gathering of the Kiss Army. Their yeah. fans are known as the after Kiss. After that, was sheer delight. Yeah, they had platinum out gold albums and platinum albums, and they sold more merchandise than they had in history: toys, games, lunch boxes, pinball machines. Yeah. As a publicity stunt, they. They put their blood into the red ink of the first Kiss comic book back in 77. We're going to eat breakfast now, Kenny. Why don't you now let, let's go sh sh short on the uh, blood talk. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, so here we go. There's and they had a disco hit called I Was Made For Loving for their 1979 album Dynasty, mm. which would turn out to be the name of a soap opera. In the evening. Yeah, with John Forsyth and Joan Collins. Yes. And she would leave a room like this. Well, Joan Collins was Edith Keeler in an episode of Star Trek called w When Sitting on the Edge of Forever. Correct, sir. I am for both a knife and fork, you know. That's much easier for me to, to carve it. Okay. Let's try it out. Remember, the password is mmm. Mmm, good is, this, is, this, is the jingle for Campbell's soup. Yes. Now sell it, Kenny. Tell us all how delicious it is. Not bad at all. You did a good job of cooking. 
I take my hat off to a professional. Let's try some sausage. Why not? How is it? Tastes different than any other sausage I know. Well, you usually have to have turkey sausage. I went for the full scale, real deal. Is it good? Pretty good. All right, so that's an omelet. Pretty simple to make. Um, and uh, you should uh, try it sometime, maybe in the morning. Um, and Kenny's going to enjoy that. And we're going to come back with our next segment, which will be scrambled eggs and bacon, made by Chef Kenny. Yours truly. Indeed. 